Hey there! In today's video, we're going to discuss myocardial infarction and ischemia, specifically non-ST segment elevation and non-Q wave syndromes. So let's start with the basics. Myocardial infarction is commonly associated with abnormal Q waves and ST segment elevation, but sometimes it's limited to the subendocardium, the inner layer of the ventricle, and primarily associated with ST segment depressions rather than primary ST elevations. Now, you might wonder how subendocardial ischemia can occur without transmural ischemia or infarction. It's because the subendocardium is the most vulnerable to ischemia due to its distance from the coronary blood supply and high pressure of the ventricular cavity. So this inner layer of the ventricle can become ischemic while the outer layer or epicardium remains normally perfused with blood. The most common ECG change with subendocardial ischemia is ST segment depression with a characteristic squared off shape. Acute transmural ischemia produces ST segment elevation, while subendocardial ischemia produces ST segment depression, except in lead AVR, which often shows ST elevation. Angina pectoris, a symptom of coronary artery disease, is experienced as a dull, burning or boring substernal pressure or heaviness. Many patients with classic angina have an ECG pattern of subendocardial ischemia with ST segment depressions seen during an attack, but not all. Exercise or stress testing can be used to diagnose coronary artery disease by recording the ECG while the patient is being exercised under controlled conditions. Subendocardial ischemia often produces ST segment depressions in multiple leads. Sometimes, a patient with coronary artery disease may have episodes of myocardial ischemia without angina, called silent ischemia, which can be detected during exercise testing. Ambulatory ECG monitoring is the most useful way of assessing silent myocardial ischemia, which reveals a surprisingly high frequency of ST depressions not associated with angina. If ischemia to the subendocardial region is severe enough, actual infarction may occur and the ECG may show more persistent ST depressions instead of the transient depression seen with reversible subendocardial ischemia. Non-Q wave infarction can be associated with either persistent ST depressions or T wave inversions. Myocardial ischemia can result in a variety of ECG changes, ranging from diagnostic STT changes to nonspecific STT changes. Infarction can cause abnormal Q waves in association with stust segment elevations followed by T wave inversions, and ventricular aneurysm can be associated with persistent stust segment elevations. Subendocardial ischemia, such as during an anginal attack or a stress test, can produce transient ST depressions. Infarction may also be associated with ST depressions or T wave inversions without Q waves. Non-infarction ischemia can also cause ECG changes. In some cases, the ECG may remain entirely normal during episodes of ischemia. In others, the STT complex may display only subtle changes, such as slight T wave flattening or minimal T wave inversions, which are nonspecific STUS T changes. Nonspecific STT changes may be abnormal, but they are not definite indicators of ischemia. They may be a sign of ischemic heart disease, but they may also be caused by many other conditions, including drug effects, hyperventilation, and electrolyte abnormalities. Therefore, a definite diagnosis of myocardial ischemia should not be made solely on the basis of nonspecific STT changes. Prinzmetals variant angina is another form of non-infarction ischemia. The ECG with classic or typical angina often shows the pattern of subendocardial ischemia with ST segment depressions. However, an atypical form of angina, first reported by Dr. Myron Prinzmetal, is seen in a small but important subset of patients. Their angina is atypical because during episodes of chest pain, they have ST segment elevations, a pattern described previously with acute transmural myocardial infarction. However, in Prinzmetal's angina, the ST segment elevations are transient. After the episode of chest pain, the ST segments usually return to the baseline without the characteristic evolving pattern of Q waves and T wave inversions that occur with actual infarction. Thus, Prinzmetal's angina is atypical because the ECG shows ST elevations rather than the ST depression seen with typical angina. Patients with Prinzmetal's angina are also atypical because their chest pain often occurs at rest or at night. In contrast, patients with classic angina pectoris usually have chest pain with exertion or emotional stress. 
Prinzmetal's angina pattern is significant because it is a marker of coronary artery spasm that causes transient transmural ischemia. These episodes of spasm may occur in patients with otherwise normal coronary arteries. In most cases, spasm is associated with high-grade coronary obstruction. Increasing evidence implicates cocaine as another cause of coronary spasm, sometimes leading to myocardial infarction. Another important condition to be aware of is Takatsubo cardiomyopathy, also known as stress cardiomyopathy or left ventricular apical ballooning syndrome. Most patients with Takatsubo cardiomyopathy are middle-aged to older women who present with chest pain, ST elevations or T wave inversions, and elevated cardiac enzyme levels that may exactly mimic a classic acute or evolving myocardial infarction. However, fixed epicardial coronary disease is not present. Instead, the pathophysiology may be related to coronary vasospasm or myocardial damage mediated by neurogenic factors in the context of emotional or physical stress. We appreciate your time spent learning with us today. If you found this course beneficial, we kindly ask for your support. Share this video with colleagues, subscribe to our channel, and leave us a positive rating. Furthermore, if possible, consider donating any amount via the link in the video description below. Your support empowers us to keep offering free, top-notch education to all who seek it. Before concluding, we're excited to announce our upcoming class on drug effects, electrolyte abnormalities, and metabolic factors. This vital topic is essential for mastering ECG interpretation, and we can't wait to explore it further with you. To stay informed on our newest lessons, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell. Thank you for being a part of our educational journey today, and we look forward to welcoming you to our next 100% online and complimentary ECG course.